If you find that you like tank chats, why not subscribe to the Tank Museum channel and you can watch them all. Thanks very much. This is the M46 Patton. It was actually the first American tank to be named after General Patton, but in fact there were three of them, four if you count the M60, which was never officially a Patton at all. But the M47, which came after the M46, the M48, which came after the M47, they were all Pattons. It's as if the Americans could not think of another name for a tank, but um, he was quite an impressive fellow in his day, so I suppose that accounts for it. Now, it's quite an interesting tank. It saw action during the Korean War, and it saw action as part of the United States Army, but it was a complete contrast with the um, M26 Pershing from which it had been developed. In fact, the hull is very similar to the Pershing, as you'll see. It's got the same front and the same um, turret and everything else. But what really makes the difference in this tank is the engine. It's got an air-cooled V12, a Continental in the back, driving through one of their Allison cross-drive transmissions. And it means that the tank's far more powerful and far more manoeuvrable than any tank had been up until that time. The engine's rated at 700 horsepower. And when you compare that with the Pershing, which only ran at, what, about 500 horsepower, you can see that this thing had a load of oomph in it. And it needed it, especially for Korea, which is a, not exactly a flat country. So it was a, it was a well-powered tank. It's got a 90 millimeter gun. All of the American tanks of this period have 90 millimeter guns. But in this particular version, it's got the um, fume extractor as an enlarged section of the barrel near the front of the barrel, not halfway down as they do on British tanks. But that was, that's an identifying feature of the M46. Now, another feature to look at for the M46, if you want to make sure it's not a, well, there are two, in fact, it's, it's not a Pershing. One is that in addition to having six road wheels, and you can see them here, um, there is a small road wheel at the back. Behind the six main ones, before you get to the drive sprocket, there's a tiny little wheel just to keep the track in tension. And that's a feature unique to this type of tank. The other feature that just happens to come out in this kind of tank is that the exhaust pipes or mufflers as they're known in the States are on the wings at the back. On the Pershing they're right in the middle and squirt out their fumes from the hull itself but on the M46 they're here on the um, on the fender at the back. So that's another feature to look at when you want to identify this kind of tank. It has a five-man crew that's three in the turret a driver and a co-driver in the front. The co-driver has a lap gun, which is a 30 caliber Browning. And there's another coaxial Browning alongside the, um, the main gun here. And a 50 caliber up on the top for the commander. The only strange thing, which I've never actually had explained to me, is that bracket on the front of the turret. It's not exactly clear what it is. It looks like a support for an extra machine gun but um, I'm not absolutely sure. So anyone knows what that is exactly, it would be nice to know. The other thing I was gonna point out to you is the fact it's got a tiger's face on the front. Now these things, the, the idea was that at the point of the Chinese New Year, as the year of the tiger was ending, they thought if they painted tigers on the, of tigers' faces on the front of these tanks, and they're all different, some of them have claws, some just a big head like this, um, they'd frighten the uh, Chinese, the superstitious Chinese to death. Whether they did or not is another matter, but the tanks man managed to hold their own very well. It was about equivalent to the British Centurion, certainly in terms of mobility it was, although in gunpowder it fell a little bit behind the scent. But otherwise it was probably the best tank the Americans fielded in that campaign. The suspension is torsion bar, and that's another thing that really needs explaining, is the origins of torsion bar. We know they came in with the M24 and the M26 during the war, 
Before that, the Americans had used the vertical and horizontal volute spring suspension. But why they suddenly went to torsion bar, where the torsion bar idea came from, we don't know. And that would be another thing that we'd, we'd need to know. The tank has a rear drive sprocket, and you'll notice also on the M46 that the sprocket is a lot higher than it is on the M26. That's because the final drive is different and comes out at the top. And it gives you a, a more level run with the top run of the tracks than you get on the M26. But otherwise, it's an interesting tank, mostly cast, the hull and the turret, all in large castings, which really are the best as far as being bulletproof is concerned. So uh, that was another feature that um, stood them in good stead. But the M46 really didn't last very long. As soon as the Korean War was over, it was replaced by the M47, which was in effect the same hull with a larger turret but the same gun on it. And then later on still the M48. So from that point of view, the M46 is only a, a transient design. But it's an interesting tank all the same. Well worth having a closer look at sometime. And um, a few questions about it that uh, we haven't answered exactly yet. But it's in a vehicle worth looking at. Thanks very much. As ever with these tank chats, we're only doing them because you're supporting us. So can I thank those of you who have joined our Patreon scheme or are supporting the Tank Museum in one way or another as an independent charity. Um, we just can't continue doing the activities we do unless we get public support. So please, if there's any way you can support us, Patreon's the obvious one to, we, we encourage people to go for, please do. And we hope you do still continue to enjoy these tank chats we're making.